welcome back to yet another time where we are going to house some zucchinis and in this video I'm also going to show you how we use some of them uh, in our dinners and so on and we will also have some other stuff that um, I'll show you and right now I'm just waiting on Preben to get here so we can do it together uh, because there are so many that I almost can't uh, carry them it is a little windy today but the weather is still really warm so that is nice to be outside today and this is one of our little pear trees that is also carrying a lot of pears this year but now we are going to start with all of the zucchini harvest and we have this one scissors that we are using to cut off the stems so that we won't break them because uh, then they won't last as long when we have the stems on them they can last several weeks and the bigger the zucchinis are the longer they can last and i have even had some that lasted more than half a year so that is really nice if you want some zucchini in the winter time and you don't want to buy it you can just uh, keep some of the bigger ones and we have a lot of different sizes and colors and so on we really like the different colors and uh, these are some patty pans that i mostly just have because i think they are fun to look at and all of the rest of the zucchinis are more regular um, shape so that's just why I have this one plant of the Ufo squash. Well, it is allowed to just have a little fun when you are harvesting so many vegetables, isn't it? Det 
hold med dine undskyldninger, fordi du ved, at de krasser, og det gør de hver eneste gang. Jeg kan ikke klippe den. Så er der nogle stykker på den næste spej. Jeg må klippe den så tæt på, fordi så ødelægger du den. Det ved jeg godt, men det er svært at komme derned. Ja. Men det er sådan en, der skal bruges med det samme. Der er nogle gule herovre. Jeg har i hvert fald en til. Det er langt fra den, du lige har taget. Så er der nogle herovre. Hvad er det? Det squash. And we ended up with about 13 to 14 kilos of zucchini in, in this harvest, so there's a lot of zucchini to be used up in different ways in the kitchen. And we are also going to harvest some other stuff while we are out here. We have all of our cabbages under this netting, so that the um, butterflies, moths, won't get under here and lay their eggs and destroy all of our cabbage. So it's a little difficult when we're going to harvest it, that's why we are usually two people doing it, so the one can hold up the fabric and the other one can harvest. 
And then we're going to harvest two or three at the time and uh, just keep them in the fridge until we're using them. And then the next week we can do the same once again. And this is a Savoy cabbage and uh, it looks really nice. It's not the biggest cabbage ever, but uh, we're also early on the season, so we're just going to use this one. And I still think it weighed about 1200 grams. And the nice thing about having the animals right on the side of uh, the kitchen garden is that we can give them the extra leaves on the outside of the cabbage. And right now we have a drought and a heat wave in Denmark, so the grass is not growing and the geese really enjoy to eat the grass and all the green things. So they're so happy to get these cabbage leaves. But because of the wind, uh, the leaf is keep on blowing <laughs> in, in the, the head of Greg, so he was a little confused about that. But uh, they are enjoying all of the greeneries. <laughs> And for the first time we are also grow growing these and that's some sort of a really big turnip. And I think this one weighed more than two kilos and um, when I cut off all of the roots and uh, I peeled everything on the outside off, we still had food for two people for three days. So it's a really big vegetable and it grows really fast. So that's a fun one to have and we ate it almost like if it was uh, potatoes. And there's some more in here, uh, some smaller and some bigger ones. So we have a lot of food here. We also picked one of the green cabbages that we are bringing inside with us. And as I mentioned before, the extra ones we are just keeping in the fridge until we are using them. And all of these really big outer leaves we are giving to the animals. And uh, we got this really nice big harvest from over here today and uh, there's a lot of kilos of food here so we have to carry it over in uh, two or three times because there's too much to carry at once. And Preben comes with the first load of zucchini now and then all of the rest is still up in the corner. And uh, I'm down in the other end of the garden where I'm going to have a look on the pumpkins and they are really growing well. There's a lot of bigger pump pumpkins now and uh, we will uh, harvest them in October just before the frost comes. So they will get a lot bigger than they are now. And I also have a few strawberries on the way here. So that's a little funny. That must be another kind than the other ones. And over here we have a little potato bed and we want to harvest it before the pumpkins take over the whole bed. They are already on their way over here. So we're going to harvest all of these ones. 
and uh, in some of them there has been some animals, maybe some mice, that had eaten some of the potatoes. So in, in the first round here we'll just go and harvest all of them and then we will sort them out and if they're not too damaged we can um, cut off the damaged pieces and just use the rest uh, right away. And the potatoes that are still in a nice shape we can uh, keep during the winter and use them up uh, that way. They are growing in horse manure and compost, so they are really easy to get out of the dirt. We can just pull up the plants and most of the potatoes will just follow. And because it's so dry right now, they are not muddy or dirty at all, they are just a little dusty. So they are really easy to clean also. And uh, we both have these uh, yellow potatoes and then we also have some blue and red ones that we are going to harvest in a moment. And in this end of the bed there were some birds or something that had tried to dig up some of the potatoes that, so that's why I put on uh, some hay to keep them uh, underneath so they wouldn't get too green but some of them got green anyway so we'll just throw, it, throw those away but that is why there's this hay and some of the potatoes were kind of rotten I don't know why but we'll also just throw those away
So even though we didn't have so many potatoes, we still got this whole large bucket full of potatoes. And we still have a few plants uh, in the garden where there are potatoes. So we will get some more. And uh, now I'm going to show you how I use some of my zucchinis. Um, I really like to cut them into small pieces and bake them in the oven with onion and uh, a lot of spices and some oil. So this is one of the ways that I'm using uh, these large zucchini harvests that we are getting right now. And I just cut up some onions and uh, I'm going to mix it on this baking pan and uh, then I'll put on all of these spices and bake it in the oven. And I really like for them to get a little drier um, when, when you first start uh, to heat them up they will get mushy and wet and then they will dry out a little. Especially when you put on some salt. And this is my homemade uh, herb salt that I made out of herbs from the garden. And I use this a lot in my cooking. Um, it, it tastes a little better than just regular salt. And uh, I also put on some pepper and uh, my homemade chipotle powder that I made last year out of smoked chilies. And I also like to use Herbe de Provence, but I don't have more of the spice blend right now, so I'm just uh, using uh, the herbs um, on its own. So it's oregano, thyme and rosemary. I also like this spice blend on top of potatoes, so I'm just doing the zucchinis a bit like if it were potatoes. And uh, right now we are eating keto again, so I'm not eating potatoes right now, but uh, later on in the year, maybe once or twice, I will have them. And this is some garlic powder. You can also just use fresh garlic, but when you're tired after being in the garden all day, it's nice to have an easy option. And this is the pepper mix that I also really like to use. And then I'm putting on some olive oil. And uh, I'm also using a balsamic glaze and it gives it uh, both some sourness and some sweetness and it will also help it to caramelize in the oven. And now I'm putting it in the oven for about half an hour with the fan on so it can dry out a little. And then I'm going to toss it around and give it some more time. And uh, in this little bowl I have some of uh, that herb salt that I talked about before. And I'm just putting in some uh, creme fraise or sour cream and making a little dressing out of it. This is a really fast and easy way to make up a dressing. Uh, without using a lot of different spices or blends that you can buy. And now the zucchinis are finished in the oven. You can give them as long or as little as you want. I like them best this way. And uh, we have some leftovers from the other day that we are going to eat as well. And I just heated up, it up in the oven along with the zucchinis. So I'm going to place uh, half of the zucchinis in each of these bowls for us to eat. And then uh, that other dish I'm going to put on the other side of the bowl. And uh, it's some kind of uh, almost a keto lasagna. Um, and instead of the, the pasta noodles, I blended up some eggs and some cream cheese and something like that and made it to a topping and uh, also with some cheese inside. 
So it's not exactly a lasagna, but it tastes a lot like it, and then it's really low carb. And I'm just dividing it up into two and uh, placing it in the bowls that, that I mentioned before. And uh, then at the end I'll put on some of that dressing that goes really well with all, all foods. And this is how our dinner looked like this evening and it was really really delicious so that is something that we are going to make again this is the next evening and uh, i have some duck breasts in the freezer i thought them thought them overnight and they're not entirely thawed yet but that doesn't matter as long as i can break them apart these are from some of the ducks that we raised last year so most of our meat is something that we have raised ourselves. I'm going to cut in, cut in some um, dents on the skin side and then I'm going to put salt and pepper on them and uh, I'll put them in the air fryer with the skin side down at first and then after a while I will um, turn them around so uh, the skin side is up and it, it can get a little crunchy. I have not tried to make duck breast in the air fry before, so I'm just going to wing it and uh, I'll set the timer for 20 minutes at first and then I will uh, look at them and see if they need a, a little more on that side or I will turn the breasts around and give them some more time. And now I'm putting some bacon into a pan and I will fry that up. And then I'm going to cut up that savoy cabbage from the other day and uh, this is how we'll go, go to eat it this evening. So the bigger outer leaves, uh, the darker leaves, I will also use some of them. We already gave some of them to the geese, but the rest we are going to use. So I'll just cut out the stem and then I will uh, cut the rest into smaller pieces and uh, the green uh, outer leaves are a little tougher than the other ones, so I'm just going to fry them up with the bacon before I'm putting in the rest of the cabbage.
once in a while I'm just tossing everything around so it will be cooked evenly. And uh, I'm also putting in some spices. The bacon was really salty so I don't need a lot of salt. This is the pepper mix and uh, I'm putting in just a little salt but I could really have left it out because it was so salty. <clears throat> I'm also putting in some uh, garlic powder and again you can just use uh, fresh garlic but I didn't have the energy right now. These are the duck breasts. I'm just going to have a look on them and uh, they look really nice. Then back to the cabbage. I'm putting in some uh, fresh mozzarella and uh, it will get to melt just a little but not so much that I can't uh, separate it again. And the duck breasts are ready. Into the cabbage I'm also putting some Emmentaler shredded cheese and that gives it a really nice and creamy taste. And uh, you could also put in feta cheese, but I'm glad that I didn't have any because feta usually is also a really salty cheese and uh, as I mentioned it was salty enough. Now I'm cutting up uh, the duck breasts and um, I find it easier to eat it this way when we are using the bowls. Uh, instead of having a knife um, at the table or wh wherever we're sitting. So I just did it this way and Preben likes it in these bigger chunks and mine I'm cutting up into smaller chunks. And now I'm putting the cabbage on the other side of the bowl beneath the, the duck breasts. And uh, this is Preben's portion and he likes all that extra duck fat and other yummy stuff so I'm just pouring it over his food so he'll enjoy that. And this is my portion where I cut the duck up into a little smaller pieces. So this is how I like to eat it. And uh, this is all for this time. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you will subscribe to my channel. That will help me, help me a lot. And uh, as always you can go in, into Instagram and follow us at Vestas Farm Life. Bye bye.